Hey guys, how's the weather today? Hot? Yep, you know why it's hot? Because global warming! Okay, no, that was a joke. But speaking of global warming, here's a video I found that talks about the melting ice. You guys ready for this? You sure? Alright, let's begin. Second story of the day is about the Greenland ice glacier. So, for some reason, liberals think they control the sun, they think they control every volcano in the world, and they think they're God. I don't know what kind of people you're talking to who claims that they control the sun or control volcanoes. Literally, who says that? Now, I know what you're ultimately trying to say here, that the change in climate has more to do with those factors than human activity, and I think that by itself is a gross misrepresentation on what is actually happening. You do touch on more of this later, so I'll respond later on in the video, but in short, natural influences do exist, and they affect the climate, but that doesn't mean human activity doesn't have an impact. You can have multiple factors play out at once, and we are in direct control of one of them, which in this case turned out to be the tipping point for a positive feedback loop. More on that later. And uh, the funniest take is I shared it earlier. It's by National Geographic. They had a headline, a Greenland glacier is growing. That's not good news. So <laughs> when it's shrinking, it's not good news. When it's growing, it's still not good news. If the, you know, we're doing the right thing, it's not good news. If it's warming, it's warming. If it's cooling, it's changing. Like they have a term for everything. He didn't put a link so I had to find the source myself, which I guess is understandable since he did this in a live stream, I think. Whatever. The title of the article did read, A Greenland Glacier is Growing. That's not good news. But upon opening the article, there's a secondary title, A Greenland's Glacier is Growing. That doesn't mean melting is over. And then as a subheader, it says, A pulse of the cooler water at its edge let part of the glacier gain some mass, but overall the melting across Greenland continues apace. Now we haven't seen your interpretation of the article yet, but originally I thought you were presenting an article that went like, Oh, Greenland's ice is growing now. Now, but too much growth is bad or something like that. But it turns out that that's not the case. The article is referring to a specific glacier that is growing due to cooler water. But it's not good news because Greenland's ice mass overall is still declining. So here we're not quote doing the right thing and it's still not good news. I suspect here that you haven't actually read past the title. And here's what I'll say. And this is what I, I don't think liberals under, understand at all and progressives and some even some conservatives. Speaking of liberals and conservatives, I'm not a huge fan of climate change being such a political debate. Science should just be science. If there is a scientific consensus on the earth warming due to human activity, that should be taken as fact. The political debate then should be how we plan to tackle this issue, not if humans are actually warming the climate or not. It's ridiculous. Yes, every cause we have has an effect. Yes, we should try to switch to the cleanest energy possible. Yes, we're trashing the oceans. Yes, we're polluting the air. We're doing a better job, but we could always do better. Yes, I would like to see all of these shifts in our, I, I think, spiritually, mentally, and even physically, we're doing this earth a disservice. And I think we need to step it up on all fronts, absolutely. But there's certain things that human beings can't control, no matter how many scientists lie about it, no matter how many government paid scientists lie about it, no matter how many Bill Nye, the, the Democratic spy guy, you know, and Neil deGrasse, you know, read the script, no matter how much they say it, it's not going to make it true. Of course, there are always going to be things that humans cannot control, but there are also things humans can control and I think you're putting way too much emphasis on the sun or volcanoes. And human emission of greenhouse gases has been the main contributor to a potential positive feedback warming loop. Now, warming and cooling will always go through a vicious cycle. I'm sure you've heard about the positive feedback loops, how there are multiple mechanisms that reinforce each other. For example, warming leads to melting of ice caps, which means the Earth's albedo will go down, so less sunlight is reflected and the Earth heats up more. Or other pathways, such as a hotter climate, moves more water content into the atmosphere, which acts as a greenhouse gas, which warms the planet further. The point is there are multiple mechanisms that will positively feed the warming of the earth. And before this vicious cycle starts, there has to be a trigger, an initial warming that pushes the climate in that direction. The warming that is happening today is caused by, you guessed it, human activity. And that's really what we deal with when we talk about global warming, triggering the start of a positive feedback loop. Now I know what you're thinking. Why should we trust your word, Mr. Stick? And to that I say, you don't have to. You most certainly don't have to trust the word of some anonymous internet stick figure. That's fair. Which is why instead you should trust the research conducted by climate scientists. Just scroll down for the sources. The first thing, there is a sun. It's scientific proof. The thing in the sky, you see it, it's big, it's bright, you can't look at it or it'll hurt your, hurt your eyes. No matter if you're Bill Nye or the best climate scientist, the sun heats up the planet, the sun controls how hot it is on a, on a global scale, and uh, there's nothing you could really do about that. If at any point the sun wanted to shoot out solar flares and kill every single human and knock out the power grid, the sun has the power to do it, and it doesn't matter how, how thick your glasses are when you're like, and I'm not knocking people with glasses, I'm just saying, it's like, I control the world. It's like, no, you don't. 
Why, why even bring up glasses at all if you're not trying to offend people with glasses? I don't get it. Alright, let's talk about the sun then. Of course, as mentioned earlier, there are plenty of different ways the Earth's climate could change. Increase of greenhouse gases is one of them, but the sun is most definitely another significant factor. So in that case, how do we know the warming we see today isn't caused by increased solar output? You see, that's very simple. A lot of people who deny human-induced global warming will often bring up the sun, just like this guy here. But you know, instead of just blaming everything on the sun on little to no basis, we can actually measure the sun's output. That's right. In fact, that's already been done. Why sit here speculating when scientists have already directly given us the sun's actual output over the recent past? And guess what? It turns out that solar output, or solar irradiance, has had little to no influence over the recent warming. In fact, solar output has actually slightly decreased since 1987. And of course, the measurement of solar activity can be relatively complicated, but it's a general consensus that its impact on recent warming is very insignificant. We may not be able to control the sun, but we can measure the sun's influence on the Earth's climate. Feel free to check the sources yourself. So we've eliminated one factor that man-made climate change skeptics like to bring up. What else do we have? No, no climate scientists want to talk about the sun because their whole argument goes to trash. There have been plenty of studies that measure the sun's influence on recent climate changes. I've only linked a few of them. Have you not tried to do research yourself before making this video? Let's move on to volcanoes. There's active volcanoes under ice glaciers, and when, when, when they found that out, they do exactly what they did when the Greenland ice glacier was growing. They have to keep the mind control in order, so they say, there's volcanoes under melting ice glaciers. We just discovered them. Yes, it's a big deal. Yes, it's science that if there's active magma under an ice glacier, it's gonna melt. But don't think that that doesn't mean climate change doesn't exist. Don't go there. It's trust me, it's still climate change. No matter how, no matter how many suns or no matter how much. It's like they're so desperate to keep the narrative. You can tell that they're not scientists. I'm gonna need to have a source on that, which I can't obtain right now since you haven't given any. So instead, I'll just talk about volcanoes in general and how it affects the climate. Now, volcanoes is a tricky topic due to the fact that it can influence the climate in multiple different ways. The biggest influence is its release of aerosols into the air, mostly in the form of sulfur dioxide, which creates a blanket in the atmosphere that blocks sunlight from coming in and contributes to global dimming. So in that sense, volcanoes actually serve to cool the earth. What about carbon dioxide it releases though? Wouldn't that contribute to global warming? Well, yes, but not really. It doesn't release nearly as much as humans release, and it's a effect is insignificant compared to the dimming effects produced by the aerosol release. Volcanoes release about 200 to 300 million metric tons of carbon dioxide per year, plus 100 more considering volcanic lakes, while humans release 30 to 40 billion tons per year in recent years. So volcanoes are only releasing a fraction of what we emit. Also, if volcanoes did contribute to the majority of the CO2 increase, then we'd see a significant spike every time there's a volcanic eruption, and we just simply don't see that. Anyway, that's not what you're talking about for volcanoes, so let me address your point directly. Yep, let's talk about volcanoes melting ice. The article you were reading from didn't mention volcanoes at all, so I'll just have to get another source. Antarctica is the biggest target for these volcanoes since there are over a hundred of them underneath the ice. And yes, it is indeed introducing heat to melt the ice, as well as covering the ice in darker colored ash which absorbs more sunlight. Volcanoes are unpredictable in that manner. They can produce a large amount of heat at once, or they can remain dormant. However, they also play a role for a positive feedback loop. Once ice melts, the volcanoes underneath aren't suppressed as much, and it's easier for heat to escape and melt the ice even more. And that's what really what we need to think about the most. How are emissions of CO2 would cause more volcanic eruptions. Right now, many of the volcanoes are indeed dormant, and that tends to be the case for thousands of years. However, many of them are becoming more and more active in recent years, hence the attention to them. Although they do play a role, they don't contribute nearly as significantly compared to human emissions of CO2, at least not right now. It is only after the planet has warmed enough that these volcanoes can really come into the picture. So no, we can't blame the significant melting of the ice on volcanoes. It is a problem generated by human emission of carbon dioxide, and that is the most influential contributor to melting sea ice. Mapping volcanoes Volcanoes is still important in developing future models on ice melting though, don't get me wrong. They're not unbiased, they're political operatives filled with ego and a false sense of confidence and control. So <laughs> it's just hilarious, I know how they operate, it's just obvious at this point, but that National Geographic, which you can just tell by their Instagram, they have a total political shift. They just don't know it, because that what they think is normal is, is very political. You know what you could do then? Stop reading National Geographic and read a paper instead. Uh, they said, a Greenland ice glacier is growing. That's not good news. So, scientists are stunned and baffled by the fact that this ice glacier is growing. We, we can't figure it out. The reason they can't figure it out, and the reason that they're stunned, 
is because we don't know that much. And it's not a conspiracy theory or a right-wing Koch brothers Trump operation. The article literally explains why that specific glacier is growing. Just read the body. It says, NASA's Oceans Melting Greenland project has revealed Greenland's Jakobshans Glacier. The island's biggest is actually growing, at least at its edge. In research published Monday in Nature Geoscience, researchers report that since 2016, Jakobshans ice has thickened slightly, thanks to relatively cool ocean waters at its base, which have caused the glacier to slow down its melt. This reverses the glacier's 20-year trend of thinning and retreat but because of what else is happening on the ice sheet and the overall climate outlook, that's not necessarily a good thing for global sea levels. And then later it says, why is Jakobshan growing? The scientists point to a recent influx of unusually cold water from the North Atlantic, pushing into the Arctic. This has been particularly marked in Disco Bay, which spills over into the Alulisset Ice Fjord, the glacier's home. At a depth of 820 feet, temperatures have dropped 2 degrees Celsius since 2014, and that cooler water has helped the glacier slow its melt and even grow slightly. So yeah, maybe read the content of the article before giving your opinions on it. Uh, they're not, they don't know as much as they claim to know, and there's so much ego that yes, at any moment, there could be a major hurricane, a major earthquake, a major volcano eruption, a major climate shift, a pole shift, which is happening now. The sun could do anything, it's out of our control, and no liberal or progressive wants to admit that, which is extremely dishonest, it's very creepy, and this narrative is just gonna keep getting crushed because the climate change, global warming narrative is a total sham and a scam to tax the entire world. For the sake of argument, let's pretend for a second that the cause of global warming was indeed out of our control. That for some reason the climate is warming and it was entirely due to natural causes. In that case, why would we sit around and do nothing about it? Just because whatever caused it is natural doesn't mean the effects are any less detrimental. We know what sort of impacts this will have in the future, and it's not pretty. No matter the cause, why wouldn't we say, look for greener energy sources? Why wouldn't we try to develop new technologies to reduce global temperatures? Just because it's a natural cause, which in this case it isn't, we should still be trying to avoid the detrimental outcomes. If a city is experiencing flash floods every year, we don't just sit around and go like, meh, it's caused by nature so we can't do anything about it. No, we build structures that are more resistant to floods. We relocate resources and people. We build walls to stop excess water from coming in. We build better drainage systems. The outcome is what we want to avoid, regardless of whether or not it was caused by humans or nature. Anyway, that's my time, guys. Thanks for watching until the end. A video like this takes a long time to make, so I appreciate your loyalty. A huge shout out to Fireshard, Shere Khan, and Elliot for supporting me at the highest tier on Patreon. I'll be back next week for another awesome video.